Hello, everyone, and welcome to TFYLP, Transformers for Your Listening Pleasure, the Transformers podcast that airs each week on Saturday nights at 8 p.m. on YouTube. I am your host, Gron Land, a.k.a. Weird Wolf. Along with me this evening is Rick Alvarez. Hi. Hi. Uh, the, the ball of hair that you see down there in the lower left-hand quadrant is Jim Black. And he still got his. And his, he, his I was he again. always forgets to I unmute his damn mic. <laughs> right. <laughs> as, as you, you may notice I moved some things around. I'm still in the process of figuring out what I want to put where. So that's why everything looks different behind me than it normally does. So don't panic. Uh, I, I was totally freaked out, Jim. Totally. I know, right? You know, <gasps> I, 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 was, did, I didn't I know who you were because of your uh, your surroundings. I'm like, that's not Jim. Look at his background. Yeah, I was I was totally speechless. He didn't look like he was in a in a in a dark dank back alley or anything. <laughs> also joining us from the Great White North is Jack Brunner. Jack. Hey everybody. So uh, we're gonna uh, talk to you a little bit uh, tonight about I, I know uh, several episodes ago we uh, we talked about um, the last night and. Um, basically our thoughts on it and uh lots of disappointment around the board it seemed like uh but tonight i kind of want to focus on uh what is right with the live action movies what the trans uh, what the bay movies have done right um and of course you know we're probably going to start out talking about uh, the very obvious, which is uh, it's drawn a lot uh, more attention to the franchise and uh, brought in a lot more fans and lots more money. Uh, but um, we're, we're going to look a little bit past that and, and try to dig a little deeper and find positive things about the Bay movies. And I know a lot of people out there, it's like, well, is there any? Uh, I, and I assure you, there, there is. Um, uh, there's, there's a lot to like about uh, this, this film franchise. Um, and lots more to dislike, in my opinion, but that's my opinion. Um, but uh, we're going to talk uh, talk about that tonight. Uh, if uh, you are a fan of our show, uh, please help us out. Keep the lights on. Keep the server fee, uh, fees paid. Help us uh, get upgrades and everything. We have a Patreon page at patreon.com slash tfylp. Uh, whatever little bit you feel like donating to us each month. Uh, is very helpful. Uh, Jim Black is holding something up, but it's not on screen. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, I also, wasn't sure where my camera's orientation was. I'm, I'm still getting used to this new setup. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing with you. You know, we, we're not sure where you're... I know, right? Yeah. No, so Please, which one is that? And you like the show. Yes. We like you. Hope, if, we hope you like us. Yes, if you if you if you like us and like to see us continue, uh, and uh, as always, thank you f uh, with a heartfelt thanks uh, to everybody that continues to donate to us each month. Uh, we are so thankful for you. Uh, I'm I've said it before and I say it again. I think TFYLP has some of the greatest fans out there. Um, as far as transformer podcasts go, I mean, we've, uh, the, out, uh, the outpouring of uh, support and encouragement that you give us, uh, whenever you see us out and about at conventions, uh, is absolutely, uh, humbling. And I know at, uh, uh, recent convention, I saw several of you and, uh, it was, it was really, really nice to meet, uh, fans, uh, of the show out and about. Um, Speaking of shows coming up, uh, TFCon Canada, if, uh, if it is not coming gone by the time you see and listen to this episode, uh, is coming up very soon. You can see our sponsors, uh, both of our sponsors actually, CapturePrey.com, great toys, great prices, great service, CapturePrey.com, where you can save even more with free domestic shipping on orders of $150 or more, or if you're international, say Canada, uh, you can get uh, discounted yeah. shipping with uh, orders of $150 more. Also, uh, Mega Toy Fan, maximize your collection while minimizing your costs with megatoyfan.com. Uh, you can find Mega Toy Fan on Facebook as well as popular robot toy conventions year-round, such as TFCon. 
Canada, and of course TFCon USA coming up in uh, DC area later this year. Um, I'd love to go. Uh, I, it, as it turns out, I will actually be off for TFCon weekend. However, I don't have a passport, and I didn't know I was going to have that time off, so I won't be there. I have sad. Mm. But uh, any of you guys uh, going or plan to go to either of those conventions? Nope, I have a hell of a lot of other trips going on. I have... Especially the one over balls. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tripping balls, bro. <laughs> I know, but um, I have a couple trips into Minnesota I have yet to make. I have one down in Milwaukee, and I just won't be able to go. So <laughs> that's already some money sinkers and... <laughs> Unfortunately, I won't be able to go. Uh, what about you, Rick? Uh, I am not going. Um, however, I do want to get that exclusive TFCon uh, Yellow Trailbreaker. Uh, uh, Terrega uh, party. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that that Tur- looks amazing. rally Terrega. And, mm. and the toy head version. Putting that in the toy head version on it. Man, well, that, the, it's so beautiful, and and the fact even if we do get an official trailbreaker and hoist, it like could sit there on its own. I mean, it could be its own separate Autobot. You know, even though it's a Diaclone homage, it's just beautiful. Yes, it is. And we know Jim doesn't go anywhere, so no yeah. point in asking him. I has to pour. Well, so am I. But that doesn't mean I anything. <laughs> I I will be working in my basement that weekend. And that, speaking I've, of which, I painted. I still have some purple paint on me. I painted uh, three walls purple today, Decepticon purple. And so you even I've, painted your toe purple too. And I broke my toe today, so now it's all purple too. <laughs> Ow! Uh, so I have started a Facebook page for um, for my vault, my basement. I am turning my basement into the Autobot Arc and Decepticon Nemesis. And uh, that Facebook page is not live yet. Uh, I'm going to have to put all the pictures of my uh, work in progress. Uh, that should be launching uh, soon, hopefully in the next uh, week or two. Awesome. You know, if you had more purple on you and you had a T-Rex for a right arm, you could be going, yes. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know what? My last name is Alvarez, so would I say C? <laughs> I, I'd be a little worried if his arm turned purple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That nobody likes a purple-headed monster. Oh wait, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, like I don't know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, Jack's a bit young and innocent. Yeah. Um, so I, I missed the movie talk last time. I uh, had a bunch of things to say about the movie, having uh, been privileged enough to have worked on a few of them. Um, I didn't work on the last night. However, a lot of our concepts for the la- for part four, Age of Extinction, ended up in the last night. I was wondering if we could touch base on some of those today, Daron. Well, uh, absolutely. Let's, uh, let's talk about those before we head into the movies one through... Five. So this isn't a critique of the film, uh, but this is uh, just just some background info. Um, long, long time ago, uh, Aaron Archer and I at Hasbro put together the pitch for what would be the story elements for the next Transformers film, which at the time was going to be Age of Extinction. And we had this idea of this little motorcycle character. And this motorcycle character would be a... Uh, a a robot that this kid would build. Uh, we just had him designated as a boy. He would be like the new Spike because we knew Shia wasn't coming back. Uh, that he built this Transformer and at the end of the film story, Optimus Prime was going to grant him an Autobot symbol and was going to make him an official Autobot. Uh, so that concept didn't make the fourth film, but it did carry over into what became Squeaks. So that concept was there from uh, from the last film. Uh, so it was kind of nice to see that. Um, 
also the idea of uh, not so much Unicron or a giant ship emerging, but the the idea of uh, a giant transformer coming out and the Autobots having to attack it was something that had been played around with towards the end of the uh, story development of, the, of movie four. But not so specifically in, Unicron. No, no, no. It was, te- it was at that point, it was called Galvatron, and that, and that name was more of a placeholder. So the idea was um, that, the, uh, that the humans were building a base, and uh, they were using the Decepticons to safeguard that base to keep the Autobots distracted so that the Autobots wouldn't find out what the humans are doing. And at the end... Uh, the humans would find out that the base is a transformer, and that would turn into a giant transformer called Galvatron. Um, so I now that didn't necessarily happen in in this film, but Rick, are are, are we talking like a like a gigantic city sized purple and orange cannon? So that didn't necessarily happen in this, in, in this film. <laughs> Notice he glazes over the stupid question. <laughs> I there there are no stupid questions, just stupid people. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I did see elements of that. S- to me, it was just indicative of that and that final battle sequence that that was going to happen. And uh, I don't, you know, I don't know for certain. I'm not involved with the pr- official production anymore. But there was that yellow crane in the background mm. in that junkyard scene. And I wonder, I wonder, It it was a bit... It, it just invoked the movie concept for Erector that we had. And uh, I don't know if uh, how many of our listeners actually got to see that movie concept uh, that we pre- presented in the documentary Righteously Huge at the uh, Transformers Hall of Fame, uh, I think in 2011. But there was an Erector movie concept. And uh, that crane just kind of like, hmm, just made me wonder if that was it. That um, looks a but, bit familiar. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the idea of Unicron had been discussed for the fifth film in in a very very different capacity. Uh, that he that it would have built up over a course of several films to Unicron. Um, so that had all been stuff that we had discussed. But the the main thing that carried over was uh, was Squeaks. Uh, he didn't have a name at the time. Um, the concept art was very different, but um, that concept of that motorcycle. And the the girl, or the kid, was from uh, from our story pitch for part four. You notice that Squeaks didn't transform in the movie. Yeah, I was a bit annoyed by that. Do you, yeah. do you notice that a lot of guys don't transform in the movie? They cut. Uh, well, I think we mentioned that in the last episode. Like you said, you didn't hear. Yeah, so, I think we did. Uh, but uh, uh, if the, if there's any transforming going on, it usually happened like off screen, and you could hear like. Like the choo 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 choo, you know, uh, in the in the off screen, and the next thing you see them, they're like in their in a different mode, and it's like, oh come on, you know. Yeah, but Optimus didn't even transform. I, I mean, don't... he shows up in his truck mode once. He really I, hadn't I, transformed in like two movies, has he? Did he transform I, at all in the last one? And four, yeah. Well, yeah, after he scanned yeah, his he new did. truck mode, he. Uh, mm. um, he I guess really he transformed did. when he yeah. made up with the Autobots. I, I think yeah. when he he was the evasion mode. No, no, no. He transformed in both modes. Did he? Both marks, but he yeah. didn't transform in, a- in this age, movie at all. In Age of Extinction. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Right after they inter- first introduced, like, uh, Drift and Hound and all them. That's right. So yep. it's it's a little weird. It's a movie called Transformers, but they don't transform. Well, uh, you know, to touch on the critique that I gave it in the last episode... Uh, the biggest problem that I had with it was the fact that uh, it takes elements. It, it, it's almost like somebody was given the cliff notes of Transformers that has no idea about anything in the Transformers uh, in the Transformers universe, from G one all the way to RID two point uh, They have no idea. They're given the cliff notes, uh, basically a gloss over. Of uh, of major uh, plot points and characters throughout Transformers history, and they try to f- shoehorn them into a movie without any 
context whatsoever, and usually they wind up misquoting or misrepresenting said character. Case in point, Quintessa. In Transformers lore before, it was a planet. Now it's a singular character. Uh, well, well, Quintessa was one of the 13 primes. It, it was uh, Quintus Prime was the name of it. And he, he was the prime of life. He was like the Johnny Appleseed where he had his bag of sparks and he would go and, and bring life to different worlds. And she, she referred to rep- herself as the, as, as the prime of life in, in the film. Yeah, yeah. It's like somebody took the, the binder of revelation that we created and just ran it through Google Translate and then translated it back. Yeah. And then they they use that to make the movie. Yeah, I mean, it it just had it's like it would. Uh, now I have to say that the last night, as far as Transformers content, actually far outshone Age of Extinction in my opinion. Uh, but it like missed the mark on accuracy. You know, uh, to me, it's like you know if you're going to make a movie about Transformers, it, uh, you know. I don't care if you create new characters, but at least if you're going to have relative characters, at least make them recognizable. At least Prime is recognizable. B is at least a yellow character. But everybody else in the whole uh, film franchise bears little to no resemblance, uh, either physically or characteristically, to anything that we're familiar with. And to me, that just kind of defeats the purpose of a Transformers film. You know, um, you know, they even get fundamentals wrong. You know, it's like, how did they come to Earth? You know, things like that. Well, in the tradition of all the Transformers films, uh, this film completely negates the lore established by the previous Transformers film. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's been like that way, that way since the very first sequel came out. Um, and, and, and what, what happened in, what, in uh, let's see. Okay. So, um, how many damn times has Barricade let's, died? <laughs> let's work back. Oh, he's never died. Yeah. He died well, in part three. I don't know. Soundwave did. Soundwave got his head blown off through his chest. But Barricade, I think, I think just lost I will, his eyes. I will have to say that I kind of did, uh, did dig, uh, in this movie, uh, in, in the last night. Uh, the scene where Megatron was holding Starscream's head and basically talking, yeah. talking to him like a like a scene out of Hamlet or something. Other, he's just like <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> old friend. Yeah, <laughs> that was I kind of did dig that. Um, but uh, go ahead, Rick. I, I know you were getting ready to say something. Uh, well, you know what? Let's just move on. You know, working off that point. Uh, why don't we start off with what we think the actual highlights? what we liked about part five was yeah these and then we'll just work our way through the entire saga yeah let's start with the last night since it's most recent um and freshest on people's minds and then we can go back to the very first one and then kind of work our way up um i I don't want this particular episode to be a let's bash the bay films because that's been done to death i know i know everybody has their strong opinions about it but like you said let's focus on what is done right about these films um jack let's uh, let's start with you uh what do you think was done right about the last night um i'm still honestly trying to think about it can you pass to somebody else for now and come back okay jim sorry i was muted again hi um so the last night that was an awful lot to take in, I, I have to say. Um, I mean, I, I, I could see several elements that they've pulled from various points throughout the mythos, just as they've done uh, other times before. Uh, but wow, this was a lot to take in. You've got, uh, man, you, you've got the uh, the different, uh, I, I don't know, the, the, the knights, uh, what were they called, the guardian knights? Uh, I can't remember the, the ones. The ones that turn into the dragon, they all yeah. co- all combine. I think they're just pretty much the knights. Yeah, yeah the, the the ones that interacted with the drunk Stanley Tucci <laughs> or Sozzle, yeah, whatever he was. The Dinobots were also knights too. Yes, yes, but they weren't the guardian knights. I th- I think that was the qualifier okay. that, that separated the two. Um, 
but by, by that same token, Optimus himself would also be considered a knight, uh, if we recall what he said when he first grabbed the sword in uh, uh, Age of Extinction. But I mean, uh, that that aspect of it, starting out in the in the medieval times, in the in the lore and the legend of of King Arthur and Camelot, was uh, really an interesting spin uh, on that tale, uh, and how they took out the what was it the, the Saxons, I believe. Yeah. Um. And then uh, I, I'm I'm really intrigued by the uh, the aspect of B, and also Hot Rod uh, apparently having been part of the Allied forces in uh, World War II taken on the Axis powers. Uh, and I'm, I'm kind of wondering if they might not uh, delve into that a little bit more. I believe in, it was actually and, and, written actually, into this movie as a jumping point for the Bumblebee spinoff. Okay. Yeah. Okay, because uh, uh, Sir Anthony Hopkins, his character, had uh, made some kind of passing comment or remark about having... Uh, worked alongside Bumblebee in his youth, and I'm wondering if that might not be it. And then you know his his character in in, in his younger years appears in the Bumblebee film, and then uh, I've also heard like at some point it's supposed to take place in the 80s as well. So well, I mean, according to IMDb, uh, uh, the Bumblebee <laughs> film is supposed to be set uh, set in the 80s, and Bumblebee mm-hmm. is supposed to be a VW Bug in it. Yeah. Uh, well, we know he we're going to see a cameo by a bug. I don't yeah. know if we know for sure that he will be a bug. Well, wasn't yeah. he kind of kind of like an uh, older style bug in uh, in the uh, flashback? See, I didn't get too good of a look at it before he transformed, but I, I want to say um, it may have been. he was he was uh, an old World War Two uh, you know Volkswagen. Uh, yeah. um, that's what I was thinking. Was that, that, I knew that was there was head. some vehicle that they had brought in for it, and I knew I remember reading about it, but I forgot what vehicle it was. I yeah. mean, look it G- up. Given given the time and the setting, though, that that would have taken place, so that would make sense for it to be a, at least a similar model or, or something along those lines. Um, given the origins of the Volkswagen brand in itself, um, but then moving on to uh, you know the the, the current times. Um, what one one character I kind of liked, even though he, he was kind of a throwaway character, was Canopy. Um, mm-hmm. Didn't really have much in the way of speaking parts, a few lines here and there, and uh, I, I don't know, just just the the idea that, that you would have Transformers disguising themselves as rubble and debris is is is, is just. I don't know. Well, I mean, that's that's along the lines of... Rock rock Lords a little bit. Well, it's also along the lines of Metroplex. I mean, he's Metroplex and Trypticon, uh, respectively, become entire cities, which are buildings, you know, so, I mean... Canopy forgot to read his instructions. Yeah. (laughs) But, yeah. But, Uh, uh, no, I was was interesting. Uh, It was interesting to see that and him palling around with the... the, uh, What was her name? Uh, Jayla. Isabella. Yeah, yeah uh, Isabella. I, I was going to yeah. go with Jalo. Micro, okay. J- micro Isabella. J-Lo. <laughs> yeah. um, and it was nice to see someone that wasn't an annoying human character for once. Um, you know, she wasn't, uh, you know, chasing around a, you know, uh, a Camaro or running from a Camaro or going, you know, flipping through textbooks at 90 miles an hour. Um, I thought they could have done more with Isabella, but I see potential in maybe Transformer Seven uh, for was it twenty nineteen that comes out? Uh, it was yeah, I think it was like Wouldn't it be Transformer Five. I, I I can absolutely see them bringing her back and developing her character more, um, especially if they don't bring back Marky Mark because I'm I'm thinking this uh, might be. I believe last, it was. I believe it was. Uh, so uh, that would be, that would be a good transition to to bring her in, and then you've got uh, man, I I am horrible with names. I apologize. Uh, You're just horrible. With yeah, the 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 not Megan Fox. The uh, I don't remember. Was he hunting Tim Wheatley? No, no, the the one in this one, Transformers Five. Oh, the um, historian. Yes, her. 
the descendant, uh, the uh, descendant, and I guess distant relative of uh, Sam Witwicky. It's like there there are more people to this Witwicky clan. Yeah. Uh, after all, and it makes me wonder if maybe distantly there might also, in some far off like corner of the state or something, might be you know Spike or Daniel or someone. But that, that's that's just pure fan speculation. But anyway, it was it was kind of neat to see that all come around full circle and connect back into Sam's character, albeit loosely, uh, to, to further connect with the first three films. Because I know Age of Extinction having been quite the jumping off point, um, but it, it, it kind of brought it back together. And uh, I don't know, there, there's just so many things. Uh, Co- Cogman, or Co- was it Cogsman or Cogman? Cogman. Cogman. Cogman, no S. Got it. I absolutely love and adore this character. Oh my gosh! Another he's, non-transformer. Mm-hmm. Well, he's a, he, he was referred to as being a headmaster, so that implies that I was, he has a larger vehicle form that he would connect to. I, I love the toy. I love well, the fact that he's the headmaster, as in he's it's a British term, term for like a butler. I understand. They, they, he, they said a headmaster, not the headmaster. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll have to go back and watch it. But he, I'm pretty sure they said a headmaster. He was. I, I liked his character, but I was extremely disappointed that they didn't show him transform in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, he, I, I, I think they're holding off on that till next film. You know, it, it was. <laughs> he had some great comedic moments. Um, his tongue is a missile. Yeah, what's not to love about that? That was amazing. Spitor. <laughs> right. Right. And, and then just just in the middle of this tense, serious situation, he's just freaking up on the balcony singing. Mm. That's great. I love that. Yeah. So what about you, Rick? Uh, well, there's not a whole lot that I can say I liked about this film. But there is one thing, and I think a lot of people might give me some crap for it. But I really like the film version of Wheelie. I think that is a fun character. Uh, I like the way he talks. Uh, I like uh, his size and how he fits in with the other uh, robots. He's basically basically an RC car, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. And, uh, yep. and uh, I got to play with the actual wheelie prop uh, from the second film, uh, which was really cool. Uh, so uh, the one thing I like to see in this film was wheelie. He came back, although be it in a small part, a small non-transforming part. Um, and that was kind of all I liked about part five, <laughs> was to see Wheelie. I, I was uh, to see him, because I, I had thought that he didn't survive the crash at the end of three. Yeah, I thought he was going to be... Brain, brains yeah, yeah, it's all... I thought, yeah, I thought weird. it was going to be something like Brains to where he'd be like, uh, using a cane to walk around and... Right. Yeah, I guess brains succumb to his injuries. I, I don't know. So let's let's. Uh, uh, oh, um, go ahead. So uh, you know, if we're gonna move on from the last night. Um, well, uh, I don't think Jack got to uh, say his. Oh his favorite yeah, um, of the movie. So Rick, if you want to finish up whatever you're saying, or no, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Okay, um, pretty much. The main thing I liked about it, it kind of, you know, kind of shifted focus away a little bit from the humans. I mean, pretty much the only thing I can really think of. Um, obviously, that was one of the huge problems from previous movies to where it's like it focused on um, really irrelevant parts on humans. and it was, So that's pretty much the only thing that I really didn't like about it. But uh, liked, obviously, Cogman. He was funny. Um... Well, let's see. Yeah, the whole pretty much uh, night. Uh, not a cat. The words escaping me now, but yeah, that whole um, backstory I like. Um, I think that's pretty much it. <laughs> You're struggling, <laughs> man. You're struggling. We're struggling yeah. with this one. Yeah. Yeah. I need some- well, yeah. as far as. To like about this film, uh, there's some of the designs I, I really, really liked. Um, I did like uh, uh, Hot Rod's car. 
Uh, he had a cool looking robot, even though he didn't look at anything like Hot Rod uh, in any visual form. Can, uh, can I mention one thing no. about Hot Rod? Um, <laughs> I think I know what right. he's going to talk about. Alt roll. Oh no, I was, was going to say I, I saw a post and someone had zoomed in on the on the the face, the head of Hot Rod, the the IDW figure. Hot Rod in it. Yep. Yeah. And I guess there's like a, a hidden Hot Rod face in the, I guess what you would call the the lower face or the snout of Hot Rod, mm-hmm. like below the eyes. Yeah, I saw that picture. Uh, that, uh, but I did dig his uh, his design. Um, I liked uh, the character named after Michael Bay's dog, Nitro Zeus. Uh, he was very <laughs> visually uh, interesting, both. And jet and robot form. Although in robot form, it just seemed like they just stole the CGI model for uh, Shockwave and changed it up some. Uh, yeah. Very cheap looking uh, at, at that. But it, nonetheless, he still he still came across uh, a cool looking character. Um, um, I, I, I really like this Megatron design. Although if you watch. The, the Age of Extinction, uh, Megatron doesn't get killed off at the end. He basically retreats off. And, um, you mean Galvatron? Yeah, that's Galvatron. Yeah. Uh, none, uh, mind you. Uh, and then, inexplicably, he shows up in this film with a totally new body design for no reason. Uh, I don't get that. That's another yeah. problem with the movie uh, franchise that well, that goes, you know, it's it's been going on since the first movie. You know, it's like, yeah. um, you know, the, the movie, like Rick said earlier, the movie after uh, each movie uh, subsequently takes elements from the first movie and just totally disregards it. Um, or the movies that preceded it. Uh, and that was that was an example of it. Um, but uh, let's stay on the positive, and I'll, I'll agree on you there that, I did like uh, Megatron's design. Um, uh, Megatron's the only character who, in all five films, has had a new robot mode and new vehicle mode. Uh, so that is yeah. the uh, one thing that's continuous. Mm-hmm. Mm, no, Bumblebee's robot mode's been pretty much the same and. Car modes have been updated. I mean, the car modes, you know, you're talking about decals, but Megatron's a new, basically a new model each film. Because it's it's went up model years with each film. Yeah. But that'd be the only difference. Uh, Fundamentally, yeah. Minutia. It's minutia. So. And then uh, the transition from Prime from the Peterbilt to the Western Star. But uh, he's had the Western Star for now two films. And then mm-hmm. he he used the Peterbilt for three, three, and then mm-hmm. the and then the crappy Junker Prime for like half, a, a third to half, yeah. Um, let's go back to the uh, very very first uh, live action film, the one from uh, two thousand seven, the one that started it all, and in well, my the, opinion, the best out of the uh, out of the the series so far. As I call it, the good one. Yeah, and maybe that's because I didn't work on it, but. <laughs> uh, it's it's the good one, and there is a there is a moment in that film uh, which has not been replicated, and has been my number one complaint in all subsequent films, and that is the moment of revelation. Oh yes, the alley scene. That, the alley scene yes. where you have Sam and Michaela, and the Autobots show up. And they explain who they are and where they're from and what their mission is. That moment of discovery is one of my favorite uh, scenes in film. Mm -hmm. And nothing like that has been seen in any other Transformers film. As a Transformer fan, I found found it very near tear-inducing. Yeah. that, That scene. It was a perfect intro for Optimus Prime and for the other guys. I mean, you saw them briefly when they arrived to Earth. Uh, I guess at some point after, you know, meeting with knights and stuff, they left Earth and then came back. Um, But uh, that moment where Optimus Prime drives up and transforms and you hear Peter Cullen's voice and he says, I am Optimus Prime. And that 
that is it gets you uh, in the feels joe <laughs> it's the perfect moment and i think that sums up uh my favorite moment for the whole saga mm-hmm I, I I have to say that, that the piece of music that uh, accompanied that, and uh, they changed it up uh, particularly for the alley scene, but it kind of led into it. Uh, Arrival to Earth by, uh, yep. I believe it's Joel Jablonski. Uh, Steve. Or Steve Jablonski. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, Steve. My, my bad. Um, is one of the most beautiful orchestral pieces, in my opinion. Uh in, uh, I mean, I, I I could listen to that episode. I mean, not not episode, but that that song. Um, and and I have to admit, being a truck driver, I have put that CD in and listened to it as I was driving a semi down the road. <laughs> I mean, it just it it was it's just a very moving piece. Yeah. Um, but the. I, I agree. the 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 arrival to Earth scene and the alley scene in the first movie was it was absolutely um, moving. And that very first moment, whenever Blackout is attacking the Soxent uh, uh, <laughs> airbase, yep. and whenever he's sitting there in copter mode, and then all of a sudden you hear that, <laughs> you know, the, I remember seeing it the very first time and the crowd hearing. That the the transform the old style transforming sound right there at the beginning, there was an uproar of applause, in the in the theater, and this is from a packed house now of people who were probably not likely, uh you know huge fans like we are you know, so just to hear I mean it was that bit of familiarity that people absolutely there there was an uproar about. Um, but sadly, it's not very present in every transformation scene when they even have one. Uh, yeah. They they did have it a couple times in this film, but there, uh, you know, that's that's another really great scene. Um, before the first film came out, they did a press uh, screening where they showed about 15, 20 minutes of the film at, in various stages of completion. And up until that point, a lot of people, including myself, were a little bit nervous as to what this film was going to be like and how are the Transformers going to look on screen. And this was the first scene they showed us. Michael Bay introduced it. Uh, the CGI work was not done yet. The soundtrack was not done. Um, and you see the copter fly in. And then you see it land. And even though it was very rough animation when we first saw it, you see it transform. And even at that moment, with the unfinished animation, everyone in that theater knew that this was going to be something insane. I mean, this was that was the first thing I ever saw for the Transformers movie. Um, we still, I think the only thing that had been revealed at that point was like, maybe star screams robot mode which leaked and i was just completely blown away when i saw the whole blackout transformation sequence yeah i mean it was it was it was i remember seeing it uh in the theater it was a midnight showing and there wasn't a empty seat in the house uh I, I, it was in lexington kentucky when i saw it and it was a fairly large theater um and I think every every screen that they had showing it that night was sold out, um, and just to hear the fan reaction, or the 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 moviegoer reaction, I guess is more accurate. Uh, whenever that scene took place, it was as a fan, I felt I felt like a, it was a triumph. It really was. Uh, Jack, what's uh, what's your thoughts on the first film? Um, honestly, I find it to be. Uh, the pretty much the best film out of the series. Um, my favorite bits were obviously the blackout one, hearing the transformation noise. It's uh, kind of shaking my seat when I heard it. I was like, "Ooh, hope I hear it more." Um, then pretty Sadly much the disappointed. Whole, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Then obviously the whole introduction to the Autobots. But my, I think my absolute favorite scene of the movie is when 
Optimus finally reaches Mission City, pulls out, does that power slide, and then he transforms, and ha! Oh! It's like mm-hmm. he's just ready to get, kick some ass, and yeah. he kind of got his own ass kicked. So, but I still like that scene. That was my favorite. And, yeah, yeah I, was, I have to say though, with, with with that scene, I can't help but wonder if Optimus took the wrong turn at Albuquerque or or what, because it took him an awful lot of time to get to Mission City after everybody else had already arrived. Yeah. Dramatic I, I answers. Mean, Fashionably the thing late. is that um, on the highway battle, um, what happened to Barricade? Precisely. It's like you just. Okay, I'm just going to follow these guys and just... You know, that was another another thing, too, that I loved about the first film. Even though it was a full, I want to say, 45 minutes into the film before we actually hear the first Transformer spoken word, it's when Barricade has uh, Sam Witwicky pinned mm-hmm. on that car hood and he's sitting there and he's he's like he's wanting to want to hurt this human, but he has information that he needs and he's like... You could see him visibly holding himself back. He's like punching the uh, punch in the ground, and he gets yep. up in his face. Are you username, ladies man, two one seven? And he says it like, like you would expect a robot to say it. You know, uh, he he doesn't call him by his actual name. He's like, are you username, ladies man, two one seven? Yep. And it was it was funny yet, yet you the the action the uh, and. Everything going on just just led you to it, and then you had that car chase uh, af- afterwards between him and Bumblebee. Um, in the music, uh, I believe it was uh, "Pretty Handsome Awkward" uh, was the song that was playing. Yeah, uh, it uh, it just worked. It worked, uh, and that's the moment when the uh, when the uh, the Michael Bay shaky cam and uh, uh, and all that uh, really. Uh, Really, actually added uh, added to the film rather than detracting from it. Um, mm-hmm. uh, anybody else have any thoughts on the first film? Um, you know, I, I know we're trying not to focus on the negative, but um, the way the robot characters are written, it's tough to sit and watch a film a whole film with just them acting the way they are if there weren't any humans in it. I hope, I hope that came across correctly. Um, so uh, one of the things I liked about the first film, and I'm glad uh, he came back for this one, was Simmons. Hmm. I think yes. he was he's the best human character in, in the entire saga. Uh, John Turturro does an amazing job. Um even though in this so, last film he was more more or less a bit character, yeah. yes, yeah, but it was uh, it was great. Uh, I mean, he served a function in every film that he's been in, and we did not have to see his ass cheeks in this film. <laughs> no, but he wasn't uh, in Age of Extinction, was he? No, nope. no. But unlike uh, many other human characters, he actually serves uh, a function. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. <laughs> It was said by Michael Bay and uh, several times since the inception of this film franchise uh, that he intended for <laughs> he intended for the Transformers film to be uh, the very first one to be a a film about a boy and his car. Yeah. And to me, at that uh, that is kind of not what Transformers is about. Why make a Transformers film if you're not going to make it about the story of the Transformers? Uh, yeah, I understand that you have to have a plot point that relates to care, uh, you know, that people, the general audience, can relate to. But if people can get behind a bunch of uh, people in leotards flying around and fighting each other like they do in Avengers, then you can get people <laughs> behind giant alien robots that turn into cars and trucks and, and airplanes and guns and whatnot uh, not fighting each other. You don't need that element of boy in his car. Yes, it was. It, it came across okay in the first film. It worked, uh, but I think he, the, going into Revenge of the Fallen, uh, they, uh, they 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 kind of. It's like they had something good started. They had a good basis started with the first film, and then they jumped the shark with the second. Um, uh, let's, well, there, let's, there was the writer strike too. 
Yeah, that that is that is a given, and we have to uh, we have to kind of remember that whenever we're talking about Revenge of the Fallen. Um, uh, so let's move on to that, Rick. You want to start with Revenge of the Fallen? Oh man, what did I like about Revenge of the Fallen? Well, you know, Wheelie, I that's my favorite character in the whole movie verse. Um, <laughs> followed, I guess, by Insane Optimus Prime. Um, but uh, let's see, man, Revenge of the Fallen. This is another tough one. Insane Optimus Prime. Are, are you, you know, ha- give me your face type. Yeah, give me your face. We'll kill them all. You know, that right there enrages me. I'm like, that is not Optimus Prime in any way, shape, or form. He does. He. Uh, that's not somebody that is out, uh, out to protect the right of all sentient beings. He's he's a murderous right. killer. Yes. You know. Give me your yeah. face. I need it for my collection. Yeah. Yeah. It's the piece I'm missing for this figure. Um. <laughs> uh, man, wheelie. Uh. Skids and mudflap. You know, I didn't like the character of Jetfire. But I like the way he was introduced, and yeah. I like uh, the whole concept that he was—he replaced uh, a plane at some point, and that he ended up in a museum. I, I don't like the interpretation of that character, um, but I like the whole concept of that. And he farted out a parachute in the, mo- in the yeah. movie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Makes you wonder where they stored it. That happened. And yeah. We well. All let it- of course, in the first film, we also had Bumblebee uh, pulling his oil plug and pissing on a character. Yeah, that happened too. <laughs> uh, you know, I've got to wonder what it's like sitting in a theater watching the execs at Hasbro <laughs> see this film. Like, yeah, represent a toy. I've done ship. that. I've done that. I've sat next to the execs at Hasbro while we watched the Transformers films. And they all walk out of it saying it's great. It's great. But you, they know. They know in the back of their head. They, they won't tell us. But they, they know. They made a mistake. They know. <laughs> and there's a lot of swearing in that movie. Or, well, the, man, la- the last night he, took that to a... This is on someone. Yeah, the yeah last... there's a lot of swearing in that movie. I want to take my, uh, my five-year-old daughter to see it. Uh, but I'm thinking I'm going to have to wait until the Bumblebee movie. But when you have Transformers saying shit and fuck, you know, repeatedly... I have a problem with that. Yeah, it said uh, shit is said in uh, in the '86 movie, but that was not thrown in there by Flint Dilly or any anybody like that. It was thrown in there by a marketing person, you know, uh, so that they could give that re- movie specifically a PG rating. Um, but these films, I- I'm sorry, uh, you know. This podcast, and I mentioned it on the episode where we talked about the last night, this podcast here is aimed at adult collectors. Uh, You know, I'm sure that there may be children that watch this podcast or listen to this podcast, but um, I I don't see a whole lot of kids watching a bunch of grown men sit around and talk about toys uh, all that often. Um, So I don't really worry so much about the cursing in this podcast. But whenever you have a major feature film that is based on a children's franchise, that ha- that that type of language and, and and those type of actions, yeah, fart jokes maybe, because uh, kids kids eat that up. Uh, but I just don't think it has a place in the in in the. Uh, I just don't I just don't have uh, think it has a place. Uh, and the and yeah, as it was, a parent. I I just can't bring myself to. It's not so much the violence in this film because it's it's robot on robot violence. I mean, there's there's a few instances where where people die and Sir Anthony Hopkins his character dies. Um, but I think kids can be a little bit desensitized to that stuff. It's it's really the language that just like ah I don't want to put my my five year old girl through that yet it was almost on par the last night was almost on par in language uh not in it, not an innuendo but in language it was almost on par with deadpool in my opinion yeah it was it was the same difference you know deadpool is not meant for kids and they clearly told people this you know yes it's based on a comic franchise but the comic itself is not aimed at, at kids and they still received 
thousands of complaints from parents. Yeah. Um, but we're, again, we're not we're not focusing on the negative. It is so hard to not do sure. this. Um, but I've, I've got some positives. Well, let's talk about the Revenge of the Fallen. Let's let's get back right, on right. topic here. Yes, positives about Revenge of the Fallen. Megan Fox in slow motion. Yeah. <laughs> boing boing. <laughs> okay. Th- her toe thumbs. Yeah. I'm focusing on Transformers. <laughs> Trying to we, turn us down. We topic. are. Um, okay, Alice. <laughs> no, that, okay, was, I, that was darker I mean, than that, that was a little outside the box, but that was that was honestly kind of cool. Wasn't that darker uh, than the moon as well? No, that no, was that was no. that was uh, Revenge of the Fallen. Oh, thank you. That okay. one, two, uh, one. The, the just the, the concept of that was just cool. I don't care how you slice it. That was just a neat thing to do. It was hilarious when you know she's got like the big metallic tongue and the the human tongue is still at the end of it flapping around. Yep. I, I laughed at that. Um, but aside from their personalities, which I don't really much care for their personalities, I loved the designs of Skids and Mudflap. And I wish they would have had the third member of that team in with them and went ahead and made them a combiner too. No, was, it was never was them. It was the RCs. Well, that, that, from what I understood, there was supposed to be a smart car in there, too. That, that's, that, that was why Skids and Mudflap had the, the large arms, respectively. No, they were two halves uh-huh. of a whole. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was the RCs that um, were the combiners. If you notice, uh, the Skids and Mudflap character, one, uh, each one of them had a large large side of a face and the other one and a small side of the face. And both of them, if I'm not mistaken, were opposite. You know, Right, and then, and then the, yeah. sma- they the were smart like car had, had a pinhead. The, the smart car had like a small pinhead. Where did what, you get what, this like information, it, Jim? I worked it was, on it. Was, it was on the that. boards. I mean, unless it was a well done Photoshop. Uh, I think you need to look that up. Yeah, prove that. Oh, to me. I, yeah. I think I may. I, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll research that while you, while you guys are going. But well, ultimately uh, though, I, I adored Skids and Mudflap. The ice cream truck thing, I thought that was that, that was my favorite part about that. That was cute. That was cute. over the uh, the the Chevy Trax and the Chevy B. I preferred the ice cream truck more. Yeah. One of the I'm gonna I'm gonna research that uh, smart speakers. car thing right quick. So I want to find out so our viewers and listeners can. Well, also know. when you find it, uh, if if you find it, post it in the uh, absolutely uh, in the Facebook group. Um, Jack. Oh boy. R O T F. All my favorite parts of it were um, Optimus arriving in Shanghai. You know, falling from the plane or the yeah, cool. cargo jet. Uh, obviously, you got. Stratosphere back there. And <laughs> I loved how he came with the little mini Optimus Prime, and you can recreate that scene. And one of my favorites. Then, I think this is pretty much the best fight scene in the entire series. But the forest battle with Optimus versus mm. Starscream, Grindor, and Megatron, and Optimus is getting his butt kicked, and he's like, "Okay, bring it on." Uh, Kills Grindor with the hooks to the face. <laughs> lops Starscream's... Uh, face. He helped uh, <laughs> rip Starscream's arm off, and he ultimately gets... <laughs> by uh, Megatron. Still love that scene to death. Still pretty much the best fight scene, obviously. Um, Simmons, still funny, despite, you know, we saw ass cheeks in this movie. Mm. Um, that was... As much as I love Simmons, that was the only thing I really found cringy of the character. So, um, it's pretty much all I could think of. Pretty much everything else was, you know, I I, I liked the the Constructicons in this movie, except I didn't like the overall design of Devastator as him oh, being yeah. like a big. Well, I didn't like the the wrecking balls, especially since none of the, those particular construction vehicles actually had wrecking balls so where did they come from yeah um they hadn't descended yet uh, you know but that notwithstanding i, I like the combination sequence whenever they were down in the uh, the quarry um yeah. you know it's like wait a minute there's something not right here and then they start they start to merge and that was just i, I loved that scene but i didn't um, i didn't like yeah. the uh uh, I didn't like the design of Devastator. It just, 
Uh, now that you say the whole uh, combination scene, uh, there is one Easter egg that I really, really like, and that was pretty much my favorite of the yes. entire series. But as the uh, Devastator sucking up everything into his mouth and shooting out the back, um, as the humans <laughs> were holding on, you know, for dear life, and <laughs> that didn't um, sound right. <laughs> shut up. But uh, <laughs> uh, anyways, it's. I forgot which one of the twins was holding onto the bar, but there was that newspaper that flapped onto the pipe, and I liked how it said it had Shockwave pretty much setting him up for Dark of the Moon. Still my yeah, favorite. It was it was, it was a G one box art, wasn't it? I no, no, it was uh, it was a uh, comic art, I believe, from oh, it Dreamwave. Was, okay, it was, was that, or I think the O seven movie game Shockwave. I think it was. No, no. I think it was that or uh, the comic, like you said. Yeah. yeah, it was definitely based off the G1. I think it might have been a Pat Lee piece. Um, but it was, like a, it was like a newspaper clipping, and I think the paper said, uh, uh, giant alien robot invades, or, or something to that effect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Found it. it quick. Found it, found it, found it. All right, share it in the group. Uh, e- e- okay. Uh, but... Um, but the uh, and another thing that I lament about the Revenge of the Fallen is that even though we got most or the the constructor cons and we did get a Devastator, and we got the little Legends Devastator. We didn't get a proper, fully transformable Devastator toy. You know, yeah. uh, you know, I didn't. I wasn't crazy about the design, but it was a it was a Bayverse combiner that we should have got. We ne- but we never did. You know, we got the toys, but they just didn't put a combining gimmick in it. Why? Why, why even bother? You know, I mean, technically the little Legends class, but that still wasn't you know the yeah, whole big well, thing. What I'm saying though is, like, I wanted robot form, vehicle form, combined form, and yeah. it's like the uh, the the little Legends one did that, but it's it, just was so it, it was so tiny. It was it was so like tiny. This yeah. compared to Leader Prime, which was you know like that. And yeah, it was and just then like, then you had that Behemoth, which had cool. Cool vehicles and a cool combined mode, but no ro- no individual robots. We just anyway. Uh, Dark of the Moon. Now I was actually at the BotCon in Pasadena whenever Michael Bay was there and showed us the first fifteen minutes of the film. I was I was mildly excited uh, after that, uh, but mm-hmm. after the film, I was kind of like disappointed but there mm. was there were points about it i did enjoy uh jack you you're hopping at the bill here um <laughs> i actually just found what that shockwave was it says here that it was a palisade statue of g1 shockwave aha uh-huh. that makes sense a bit of trivia there yeah i'll post it into the group uh so rick uh dark of the moon Oh, Dark of the Moon. Uh, some trivia. Uh, it, they want to call it Dark Side of the Moon. Uh, and Hasbro fought against that. And I think Dark Side of the Moon couldn't be registered in all the territories. Um, obviously because of the album. Uh, so they came back with Dark of the Moon. And we weren't... We never quite got an explanation as to why it was called that um well i think it's because uh, of the uh whenever they went to the moon to uh to explore the uh the crashed autobot shuttle up there when they found sentinel prime uh they went dark so and they explained it as okay the astronauts are on the dark of the uh, dark side of the moon Yep. Right, uh, and I think that's where the moon uh, movie actually gets its its title from. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, I like that Optimus had the really cool jetpack in it. I love that scene where Optimus is flying down. And he's losing pieces of the jetpack, and he's cutting guys in half down the streets of Chicago, and he just like nails a guy right in the stomach with that sword. Uh, that was a great scene. Um, I love the idea of the Wreckers, and I remember being so excited that the Wreckers were going to be a part of the film. The execution of the voices just didn't make sense to me. If they're NASCARs, why are they Australian? 
Um, but I love the idea of the Wreckers. Um, unfortunately, one of my uh, favorite characters from the film didn't make it into the into the final film, which was the uh, Steel Jaw, which was the Leadfoot's uh, engine popped out, and it was this cool little like uh, bulldog uh, type yep. robot. And uh, a toy Alliance. version okay. actually came with the uh, Human Alliance. Um, but we had we had uh, you know. Uh, all the concept art for that character and I just remember thinking that was gonna be the coolest thing. So the dog uh, The dog steel jaw uh, He oh, had sunglasses that flipped down <laughs> <laughs> And they were like they were like the visors like the visor that Leadfoot has it kind of looked yeah. like that like <laughs> like he would like go woof and then like the visor would flip down and he'd have sunglasses. Why on. did they not thought, do that? Come they, on. He, he didn't make the film. He didn't make the film. So, um, yeah, I was really hoping uh, Steel Jaw would be in it. But, you know, maybe one day that concept will show up again. I did like the fact that Prime had a trailer in this one. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, that, I, I didn't like I didn't... the fact that nobody said, hey, where'd the trailer go? <laughs> I was waiting for that line, like someone to say, "Hey, where'd where'd the trailer go, or where'd the trailer come from?" I, I would have liked to have seen like this black hole or something other open up behind him, and the trailer disappear into it, and then, the and then you know, it, it like go and whatever into it, he transforms, it, shoom, shoom, it opens up again. <laughs> that would have been so cool. Um, but uh, I, I like that. Um, I kind of dug Shockwave in the film. Uh, even though he didn't turn into a, a, a laser, big laser gun, uh, I kind mm -hmm. of, I kind of dug that, uh, or his, or his, uh, mode. At least he had the, the monocle eye, um, and the, and the laser arm. Uh, he was, he was a really great design. Uh, laser beak was okay. Uh, I, I didn't get the fact that he turned into a little pink bumblebee, though. Uh, yeah. I I, 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 that kind of lost me whenever he did that. Uh, I don't know. That was the one thing I didn't really care for was Laserbeak's entire appearance in the film. <sighs> yeah, I didn't like the head design on that. Um, yeah, that, that was unfortunate. We, we let that happen, too. Uh, um, the, uh, the twins had been written into the film and they, and we all know that they were, you know, filmed the vehicles cause the vehicles were on set. They were digitally removed. Uh -huh. Um, they had a scene where they died. And I think that scene actually made it into the novelization yes, when Ironhide yep. gets killed. Uh, the twins actually put up a fight against yeah, Sentinel Prime. Um, and then, uh, I think he steps on one of their heads. Trying to remember uh, how it went. I think... I want to say it was Skids went first. He started, like, after Ironhide got shot, Skids went up. He was, like, trying to tell Sentinel off, and all of a sudden he got killed. Mudflap just lost it and, like, screamed and started attacking Sentinel, and I think that's how he went, and he was just, yeah. bam. And I think that's what it was. Um, and, and then, you know, real quick about the trailer, we, we had designed uh, a really cool trailer, Um we knew that, and this just, for whatever reason, Hasbro wasn't making a trailer that transformed into the jetpack. They made a trailer that was like body armor. Uh, but before the body armor trailer, there was another trailer that was prototyped where it would open up and there was this giant cannon in it and Optimus Prime would sit in the cannon and the cannon would spin around. Uh, mm. Like there'd be a battery in it and the cannon would spin around and it could fire. It was a giant cannon. Um, but that, you know, that didn't cost out. So they ended up taking the cab Optimus and then just making the trailer into that uh, horrible Exo armor suit thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I did I did dig uh, Sentinel Prime's design, but I didn't like his character. Uh, I like the fact that they got Leonard Nimoy uh, mm -hmm. to voice him. Um, and uh, the Ironhide death scene, uh, it actually had meaning. 
uh, it wasn't it didn't wasn't just a uh, the typically Bay movie Transformers uh, meaningless death. Uh, you it's know, like jazz in the first it was, one. Uh, I, and, and Rick will appreciate this. To me, uh, Sentinel Prime, whenever he shot Ironhide with the Cosmic Rust Cannon. <laughs> uh, yep, that was me. Yeah. Uh, with Whenever he shot Sentinel Prime with the Cosmic Rust Cannon, it was almost as if it came across as a wrestling heel turn. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, all up until this time, we had doubts about him, and then it's like it was the chair shot to the back. You know uh, that yeah. scene. Uh, that's I absolutely loved. That it was scene. it was the heel kick uh, through the barbershop window. Yeah, it was, it was Hulk um, Hogan joining the NWO. You, you you could just imagine Jr. in the background going, "Oh my god!" <laughs> so. Um, you know, uh, one of my favorite things about uh, Dark of the Moon is Sentinel Prime's uh, vehicle mode because I actually recommended that, and they they actually took it mm. and they implemented it. Um, so it was the opening weekend of Revenge of the Fallen, and everyone had gone to the premiere in California except for me. I flew down to Washington D.C. to set up the Smithsonian exhibit uh, that's right next to the, the Jetfire. Uh, plane in the Air and Space Museum. So I got to run around at the in the museum after hours setting up all the props from Revenge of the Fallen. And on my way home, I was at Dulles Airport, and they had this fire truck there. And I'd never seen a fire truck like this before. I'm like, this thing is huge. I mean, the size of this is just, it's insane. So I took a picture of it. I'm like, no, I need to take a whole series of pictures of this. So I actually sent the pictures uh, from my phone, and we made a presentation board saying this needs to be Sentinel's Prime's uh, uh, alt mode for you know take this for consideration, and uh, and then sure enough it came back, uh, and that was it. And the robot mode that we used to explain the character, and it was just to explain the character, wasn't to design. Uh, we took G1 Grapples box art. Uh, and then we modified it and put all these other parts on it. We photoshopped all these things onto it, and that became the the robot presentation hmm. for uh, for Sentinel. Interesting. Nice. Now, now is that something that survived uh, your office? That, or, or is that lost to the ages? That's lost to the ages. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just, I, you know, speaking of things lost to the ages, I just found out this weekend the original. Beast Wars Rampage box art, the, yeah. the Voyage Rampage, that that no longer exists. That was also lost. That oh, was uh, oh, that was in man. my friend's that was in my friend's private collection, and uh, it got accidentally thrown out in the trash in Japan. Ooh. Oh, uh, man! That that's another one that's gone. That is sad. Now uh, we've only got a few minutes here left. Let's. Uh, quick look at age of extinction uh oh boy <laughs> yeah the dinobots now even though they didn't appear to the 11th hour in the film really <laughs> um i did like them i love them i love the dinobots in there i, I actually dig the designs uh -huh. um you know, I mean, they're not G1, but they don't have to be uh they <laughs> they were pretty badass i liked them uh, if I had to say there was any one thing in the movie that I liked in, of Age of Extinction, I would have to say it would be the Dinobots. Um, what about you guys? Uh, well, Age of Extinction was one of those things where, you know, it hit home because I put a lot of work into that film, and I was no longer at Hasbro when it, when it opened. So I got to see how it changed from the script that I saw to what became the film. And I remember thinking when the Autobots were getting on to lock down ship at, to rescue Optimus Prime, I'm like, wow, this was a pretty good movie. This, this was all right. And then I realized... It's only halfway through. <laughs> the Dinobots haven't shown up yet. I got at least another hour of this shit. <laughs> and sh sure enough, there was another hour of the movie and I'm like, ah, oh, if they had just ended it there, it would have been great. Yeah. Um, but I loved the fact that there was a villain that wasn't the key villain. Wasn't Megatron. Locked I really down. liked that. Yeah. 
it was Lockdown locked. was a cool character. Lockdown was yeah. cool. Uh, and that's that's one of the things that I like uh, about uh, the, uh, that film and, um, you know, like The Last Night, the fact that we have a Gaia Unicron in The Last Night, basically. Unicron is actually, it, it's, it, it was like it ripped right out of uh, the Prime Trilogy, um, or the, not the Prime Trilogy, but the Prime series, uh, with Unicron ac- actually being inside the Earth. Mm-hmm. Uh you know the uh, the the character of Lockdown, which was an, uh, uh, animated, I believe. Yep. When he was yes. introduced, uh, I like the fact that they introduced him into this this series. That that was pretty cool. So and he had a and he had a badass car mode. Uh, too bad the toy was a little bit lacking, but yeah. The, uh, the art that we presented was very mad mad fired. Uh, so we did present the. Uh, uh, TF animated version of Lockdown, and I, even though I didn't control casting all, I got to speak to Lance Henriksen, and I had told him, like, "Listen, we're going to put Lockdown in the movie," and he he said, "Oh, that that would be great. I'd I'd love to be able to to take that character one more time and be able to voice it." And he would have been down for it. He would have been down for it. And I don't think he could legally say that we had oh. had that conversation with Lance Henriksen to the studio. Uh, contractually, I don't think we could ever tell them that. But I, I spoke to Lance, uh, and he was definitely down for it. And I wish he had been the voice of Lockdown in that film. Yeah. What about uh, you, Jack? What do you think you like about Age of Extinction? Uh, <laughs> well, I kind of like, well, pretty much Optimus being in his more G1 truck mode. You know, I kind of like that. It was cool. Um... God, what else? Pretty much the Autobots reunited. I kind of like that scene, how Optimus went from the flat nose truck to uh, the whole changing into uh, the Western Star. I kind of like that one, that part. Um, trying to think of else that's good. I actually just watched it the other week, so it's still pretty much fresh in my mind. I'm just trying to remember. But, oh... Seeing Ratchet hunted down and killed kind of, I don't know why, but it kind of felt the same as Ironhide to where it actually had meaning this time. It's just seeing his head getting melted down. It was just, we yeah. won't see him again. And he was such a great character. Uh, I actually like another exa- uh, Another example of a meaningless death to me in, in the Transformer, in, the, in this series of films. Yeah. Uh, Jim, what about you? Well, I have to say, um, kind of like Rick was saying, you know, I really like Lockdown. Uh, I mean, you have a Transformer who's who hates you so much, he turns his entire face into a gun just in an attempt to kill you. <laughs> I mean, that's that's hate. Yeah, that's I that's, think that's, that's the stare of death. He 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 didn't care in the film. If you really notice his character, he didn't give a damn if you were Autobot or Decepticon. If you yeah. were if you were in his crosshairs. You were in his crosshairs, right? As long as he's getting paid, he's yeah. Good. Ad- admittedly, though, I have to say, though, uh, as far as Lockdown's design, I was a bit disappointed they didn't at, at least uh, call back in some way to the design that they had for what was that Hunt for the Decepticons or or uh, so, so it, when there was the Lockdown that was redone in yeah, Hunt. I think it was yeah. like 2010, so that sounds yeah, about right. that that mold. Uh, maybe not the head necessarily, uh, but the overall design. You know how, how how tall and imposing it was. Yeah. And you still you still had the the arm weapon and all that. I mean, it's just a good. I don't toy. know. I just I just really liked that design. It was a good toy. Granted, it wasn't a realistic vehicle, but you know, all the same. Well, neither was uh, movie one Megatron or. <laughs> yes, that's true. This is true. Yeah. Movie um, one Megatron, the box of knives. I have to say though, uh, what what was the corporation that was melting KSI. everybody? KSI. KSI. I always get the acronyms. Kinetic <laughs> Solutions Incorporated. Yeah, maybe? that one. Um, and they threw I a help freaking help. My Little Pony in there too. Oh, yeah. If if they had uh, apparently Megatron's psyche on file and, and, and everything. Oh. If um, they had the 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 minds of any of the other Transformers that they had melted down also on file? Could there somehow 
be some kind of archive? Uh, you know, with, with like those are questions or something. nobody has the answer for. Right, but that, that that's just one thing I was <laughs> left wondering, and they they didn't really go into that too far. Yeah. Uh, one, I mean, we saw what, like when Ratchet was killed, his spark wasn't extinguished; it was just ripped out. Yeah, but the, like like Jetfire, he crushed his. You know, but we didn't see that with Ratchet, so it's it's that's just one thing that I was I was left wondering after watching that film. Uh, but overall, I, I I enjoyed Kelsey Grammer's character, uh, Harold At- Attinger. Uh, I, I thought that was that was kind of neat that you know a human uh, would just walk up to a transformer and not not you know think give, give two thoughts about it. You just walk up to you and attempt to take you on you know just by himself. I mean that's 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 something. So uh, overall, out of all the five of the films, what is the best moment? Well, I think we I think we mutually agreed on the fir- uh, that in the first film the alley scene was the, the best moment. What's but what's the overall best film in your opinion? The first one, yeah, yeah, first would pretty much because to me it felt like last night was honestly a lot better than Dark of the Moon to me. So I kind of obviously the first oh seven movie was number one. Last night was two. And obviously, Dead Last was right under the Fallen, and you know, Dark of the Moon was third, and yeah, it was 07. I absolutely loved. Um, yeah, it's pretty much the best movie of the. Got franchise. me wanting to go back and watch it again. Incidentally, the uh, 07 movie, the uh, was it? I think his 07 movie had the the teardrop uh, shaped uh, toys as uh, like the premiere edition. Yes. Uh, the star scream is GPS, nothing but GPS. I know this from handling it last night. <laughs> oh, I mean, it was like holding it with like kid gloves. <laughs> Transformers, the flaming turd, and you broke it? No, we didn't break it. We didn't break oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it is it yeah, is made up. entirely of swirly gold plastic. The protoform one? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, yep. So, you know, we, we've, we've tried and we've struggled uh to come up with some of the uh, the best points and the good uh, the good things that the live action movies have done right uh you know i i know i know we could go on a little bit longer about this but um i'd love to hear what you fans have to say uh you can tweet us at tfylp or post in our facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash tfylp we'd love to hear from you uh tell us what your favorite moments of the transformers live action movie franchise is i mean uh let's let's try not to focus on the negative we know that there's lots and lots of negatives about this film series but there is a lot of great uh in this film series too i mean great moments there's some great comedy there's some great action scenes uh and some great designs Uh, there's there's there is some great uh let's try to find a little silver lining to this cloud uh let us know what you think fans uh, you guys have any closing thoughts? Not that I can think of. Let's uh, let's hope that a new director, new writing team can reinvigorate the Transformers. I, I think movie at franchise. this point, I, th- I think at this point, a reboot would absolutely do the franchise wonders. See, I don't want to see the same characters again. I'm ready to I move either. on. I want to. I want a total reboot. Total reboot. So I'm I'm ready to I'm ready to move past Optimus Prime and Bumblebee and I'm ready for some I'm ready to see Cosmos. So yeah. Yeah. you can always bring in Brian Singer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, I want to remind uh, people if you are listening and you are a fan of professional wrestling, we now have a sister podcast. Uh, that we are now producing. we got one episode under the belt. Uh, hopefully coming up soon, maybe by the time you uh, watch or listen to this, a second episode will be published. It's the FOWE, F-O-W-E, uh, Fans of Wrestling Everywhere podcast. Uh, if you love professional wrestling, check out the FOWE podcast. Uh, now on iTunes, and I just got the notification during the recording of this show uh, that it is now on the Google Play Store. Uh, and it should be on uh, Stitcher very soon. And also, there is a uh, video version of it on YouTube on the Faux Wrestling Podcast channel. 
Uh, it is not anything to do with Transformers. So if you're not a transform or not a wrestling fan, then you don't need to check it out. But if you are a pro wrestling fan, whether it's WWE, uh, Ring of Honor, New Japan, uh, we talk about all that stuff and a lot more. Uh, hopefully down the road we're going to get some guests. Uh, uh, we're going to try to pull some strings and get some guests down the road. Uh, so check it out. Um, and I want to remind everybody that if you love TFYLP and what we do on this show, um, uh, if you love Transformers and love what we uh, love what we do here, help us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash TFYLP. Guys, I want to thank you all uh, for joining me tonight and uh, uh, helping us to get this podcast under wraps here. Um, we will see you next time on TFYLP. Oh, uh, Rick, you got something? No, I just, I broke my toe, so oh. I was just, I was moving it, and I just, sharp, well, sharp pain went through me. Don't move your toe. <laughs> I, I'm about to head out to jujitsu right now. With a broken toe. I wouldn't recommend yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, not recommended. <laughs> Nine out of ten doctors do not recommend going to jujitsu with a broken toe. <laughs> All right, guys, we will see you next time on TFYLP. Good night, everybody. Have a good night. Later, gang.